Yeah, it's not nearly the great view you would think it would be. Yo, you heard of the Southern doing this back in the day, the NS some too, but definitely the Southern. The Southern love running long foot forward. What's up everyone? Welcome back to the channel. We're back at it with more Run 8 and today we're going to be doing some switching. We're down in Orlando at Taft Yard and we're going to be working 784. That is the Taft North switcher up to Orlando. I think his limits goes to the Florida Central with the interchange and then every everything in between here and there uh, they would hit up as well too. So uh, we got our power situated here ready to go. Uh, and this is a very populated world. I downloaded on the depot forum from uh, Brad LB. He's kind enough to uh, upload this for people to get. That way you could have a populated world uh, right out the gates uh, with all the industries uh, spotted and ready to go. There is a few things I want to do real fast before we get started. Uh, this is going to be our cut of cars right here. Let's get the tags up with uh, Control F8. As you can see, we have a ton of cars. This is like a 35 car local. This thing is huge. <laughs> it's a huge local. Man, I never had a 35 car local. Not like this. Not one where you did a lot of switching. Something else I want to do too is get rid of all this power. Uh, I don't know how TAF works now, but I know back in the day, of course, uh, 455 and 456 came down here. They had the TAF cars and uh, they would come down with two wide cab uh, like dash eights or something. Uh, the power would lay over. Uh, usually the power would lay over right down here on this track just in front of the yard office the power would lay over right there and then they would take it back on the return trip so usually there was two uh big uh, big jacks hanging out down here and then everything else was a few yard engines so uh we kind of changed that up a little bit and don't need all that power sitting down there uh i think everything else is good we're not going to worry about all this stuff you know when i worked locals back in the day um we never uh we never use six axle power like we would have laughed if you told us that we were going to use six axle power for a, a local we would have laughed at you in fact when i worked the paper mill job uh they did give us a uh, six axle furx one of those big green and silver beast uh they left us one of those one night on the main line or off the main line for our power and uh we bad ordered that thing and immediately sent it back like we did not want to use that six axle unit we would have derailed it just as sure as sure could be in that paper mill like it would not have lasted long at all we would have tore something up so um things have changed a lot they're quite liberal using six axle power on locals now because they just don't have the four axle power like they used to uh when they got rid of the b30s and the b36s that uh that did away with a large number of uh four axle units all right let's reverse and the other thing is uh, we're going to be running with one unit. So I'm going to kind of approach this the way I would do it in real life. I never worked in Taft. I don't have any real life experience working in Taft. Uh, this is just kind of how I would approach it as a conductor and how I remember doing our other ops back in the day. So another thing would be like I've noticed online uh, with online multiplayer servers for run eight is that they're quite liberal on their local power like it's always two unit sets right there you go two unit set there two unit set there there's another two unit set on down like it's the ideal situation for everyone everyone gets plenty of power right wasn't like that in real life i worked lots of locals where we just had one unit uh sometimes two as well there were some locals that always had two and, and some that would have one and then sometimes it would have two but it would predominantly be one uh, it just depended on what uh, what was available. And uh, I can remember working one local in particular where we ran uh, 70 miles one way, long hood forward, uh, which actually kind of sucked a little bit. Like it wasn't that great. It wasn't that great, uh, to be honest. It's kind of a pain, but uh, we did. You know, we ran 70 miles, long hood forward, and then we came back 70 miles um, facing the other direction. Man, this the view is just so weird on the mounting and dismounting of the cars and I I don't know why I really I just I don't know why it's doing that yeah I can't mount my equipment it sounds like a personal problem but <laughs> for real I can't I can't do it it kind of wants to work but it kind of doesn't want to work all right let's go ahead let's continue on long hood forward should be fun though we got the door open too for some uh, air conditioning 
some poor man's air conditioning here. So yeah, I'm going to go over some observations. The first one was uh, there's a power glut. It's like there's enough power for everything all the time. It wasn't like that in real life at all. Like it, you know, uh, like I said, we got another two unit power set sitting right here. A lot of times we would have there were certain jobs that uh, had multiple locals out of one yard and we shared the same power. So the day job would use the power and then the night job would use the power after the day job was done with it. And if they overlapped a little bit, sometimes we would take the power and we would split it. So one job would have one unit and the other job would have another unit. Uh, that was something that we did. Uh, so yeah, it varied a lot on that. It wasn't always just two units. So, and it definitely wasn't six axle, but I know now they do use six axle. So it's what you guys are used to. But uh, back in the day, I'm telling you, it was sacrilege. The, road, <laughs> the roadmaster would have had a cow taking six axle units in some of these like wood yards and uh, little out of the way places like that. Like it would have derailed as soon as it started going through the switch. Uh, so it's kind of interesting how that changed. So we're running old school, four axle power, uh, one units. I think we're about to get down here and grab this switch too. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab these uh, Florida Centrals. We're going to drag them to the north end of the yard. We're going to grab our international papers and uh, then we're going to head north. Now that's the other point I want to talk about is uh, it seems like online switching um, a lot of times they hit all the industries every day. Like everything is producing so much traffic. Uh, like I said, a 35 car local like this is huge. Like that would have been a lot back in the day. I, I don't ever remember taking that many cars out on a local. I remember taking that many cars out on a feeder train. Like we had a feeder train that was basically kind of the same situation where we would uh, we would hit up a short line. Uh, the, it was a, what was it? Eastern Alabama Railway or Eastern Railway of Alabama or something like that. We would hit them up. Um, and then we would pick up cars at a yard and then we would go about our business. And I think the biggest local like feeder local that I ever had like that was 110 cars. I mean, we left out of there with 110 cars one night but we didn't have any switching to do along the way. Like we just had uh, the 110 cars that we had to take back to the yard. All right, let's get on up here. Get a little independent here. All right, let's see if we can hop down. Will it let us? No, it will not. I don't know why it's not letting us do that, but sometimes it kind of works and other times it does it. I don't know why. I don't know why. All right, let's get this switch line. Up up here on the porch on the engineer side so he could see us. So at this point, we would just be doing hand signals. They they taught us some basic, you know, the very basic, you know, forward, back up, that sort of thing. Uh, some basic car counts, some of the old heads um, taught me. But, uh, you know, they used to do a lot of that stuff just with hand signals back in the day. But they had a lot more guys too to relay the signals as well too you know when it's just you and the engineer working a local uh it's hard for him to see you all the time all right let's get on up here so yeah traffic is booming all the time uh you know i noticed it's always like a a, a full pull for a full spot and it wasn't like that in real life at all like you know it really varied on the own the industries did we oh just barely right and just barely caught it okay let's hop down uh yeah these are all going to be unlaced so we're going to cheat we're going to shift f7 it yeah we'll get all the air hoses laced and ready to go that looks good and we need to go down here and make our cuts Uh, we could pull them up and cut them down there, but since it's got the Vulcan cars on the bottom down here, we're just going to cut them off and leave them for those guys. We're going to do our uh, our other crew a solid and leave it for them. So I think this is going to be our cut, yeah, our cut car right here. So what we'll do is we'll come in here and we'll close angle cock, open the coupler. These should have a handbrake on it. I hate putting a handbrake right here. Yeah, okay, they got handbrakes, it's fine. We'll do that and we're gonna need to, this may actually release it. 
by hitting F5. Yeah, I did. All right, we'll go ahead and tie one. I don't like tying handbrakes in the middle of a cut like that. You know, it should be on the other end, but we'll just do that. All right, let's go ahead and pop her in reverse. And see if we can drag him out of here. There we go. Nice. All right. Let's hop back in the engine. So I think what we're going to do... See, there it goes. It kicked me right back out again. We're going to drag these down uh, and cut them off and then go over and grab our IPTs and set them on top and then set the ECSs off and we should be good to go. Man, this thing's heavy. How heavy is this cut? Uh, 14 and 5. 1.5 HPT. Not too bad. 20 cars for the interchange. And then we'll have five or six cars for the industry. Uh, yeah, you know, a, a big thing is, like, we didn't hit every single industry in our jurisdiction every day. You know, that varied greatly for the locals that I work. We had some industries that were big like big players or big powerhouses like uh george pacific uh ge general electric we had a big ge warehouse that we would switch uh places like that got to switch every day uh but we had a lot of smaller industries that that didn't so i kind of categorize it in like three categories uh your big players that get a switch every day your middle of the road guys that kind of get every few days and then your once in the blue moon guys that like get it like once a month or whatever there are tons of places like that tons of places that only got a switch every few weeks or every uh every few months something like that it wasn't like we were just hitting up everyone every day and uh pulling all these cars and stuff like that you know it, it wasn't like that at all let's keep dragging this guy down here I'm, I'm thinking on this job, and like I said, I, I don't know the real life uh, operations of it, but I'm thinking they probably work Florida Central every day. I would imagine if that's like the local I work that did the interchange, we hit the interchange every day. Uh, and then we had a few other industries that we hit as well too. All right, we'll keep pulling and we'll cut them off down here. Uh, you know, doing a local is kind of very routine oriented job. Um, you know, like, uh, you had leeway as far as how you hit some of these places. At least we did back then. So, uh, you may hit certain places like on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and then you wouldn't bother with them on Tuesday or Thursday, regardless of if they had cars or a pool or something, you wouldn't touch them. You know, you worked on other thing, other things, <coughs> excuse me. So yeah, we had some leeway. Uh, as far as that now you couldn't blow off like a Georgia Pacific or a GE if they needed a switch you switched them but an example would be like one of the locals that I work we hit Georgia Pacific every day and then about 40 miles down the road we had um, a wood yard a pulp wood yard that we would hit and so we wouldn't go to that pulp wood yard every single day like or every time that even not even every time they needed a switch like we would kind of hold off on that you know it's kind of ridiculous to uh make an 80 mile round trip for four wood racks like four pulp wood cars so uh we wouldn't do that you know we would kind of uh, hold off on it did i pull up too far because i kind of wonder if i did it's going clear no it's not we stopped a little bit too late all right let's shove them back some that's all right, we'll fix it. A little heavier than what I thought it would be. Show them back in the clear. That might would clear right there. It looks okay. Be a little close. But that should be good right there. Okay, so we got our uh, Florida Centrals down here. Let's go ahead. We'll close that. We can't open the coupler. We got to push on it a little bit here. Get some slack. You say 784, give me a little slack. All right, there we go. Let's go ahead and open it up. And we should be able to take it to the switch. We'll just walk down there as he eases along. Uh, so yeah, we had some leeway as far as how we did the jobs. 
uh, you knew who you had to switch, who you had to focus on, who your fo you know your focus customers were, and then you knew uh, the ones that weren't quite as important, like they could wait a few days or something like that. And uh, you know you had certain routines, like you would hit customer uh, A, B, and C on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and then uh, E, F, G on Tuesday and Thursday. Uh, sometimes the routine was down to the day, like uh, you may hit certain customers in the morning and then certain customers in the evening. You know, it, it just, it varied uh, as far as how you did it. All right, let's get this guy. We'll grab one of these ECS cars. We'll have to set them over. We've got a lot more cars to switch, but we're not taking all these with us. It's just, that's a crazy amount of cars and switching to do. We're not going to do that. There you go. Ease mode up here. Oh, come on. We stopped just a hair short. Nice. All right, let's hop down. If it'll let us know it's not. I don't know why that's like working part of the time and then part of the time it's not. It's just being really weird. Uh, let's go ahead and cheat. Let's shift F70s to get all the air hoses laces, laced because I don't want to mess with that. Uh, I think what we're going to do is just go down here. Um, how can we do this? We could pull them up a little bit, cut off, and then set them over. I got maybe what we do. We need to go down here and get this switch too on the main. Should have had the engine run us down there. Totally could have done that. Just hop up on the engine and be like, run down there and let me get that switch real quick and then come back. Uh, I think that's good. Go ahead and drag them out. Probably has handbrakes on it, so we'll knock those off. There we go. Yeah, that one's heavy too. That's a really heavy cut. See how many ECS cars we have on the head in here? Uh, one, two, looks like two. Yeah, I think it's two ECS cars. Yeah, we're not going to bother. We'll get them on another trip. So yeah, we didn't hit every customer every single day. You know, it it varied greatly. It depended on the customer and uh, and what they needed, that sort of thing. And uh, it, it wasn't always just a straight, uh, complete pull and swap, right? You know, sometimes you would have to dig cars out. That's another thing that I don't see a lot is uh, you would have to dig cars out. Plastic pellet hoppers were the worst, right? Like some of the places that I work, plastic pellet hoppers. Oh, we got three ECSs. Okay. Uh, they were the worst, right? Like, let's just say a place has got eight plastic pellet hoppers, two tracks, four on each track. Uh, you may have to go in and pull the bottom one that may be your empty. So you pull them all out, you set your empty over, and then you grab your load, you put it where the empty was at, and then you shove everything back on top of it. Like uh, plastic pellet hoppers to me, at least the places that I worked, uh, it seemed like they always took a lot of sorting. Like you had to do a lot of sorting with those cars. All right, that should be good right here. And we'll just set these guys over that open the coupler we should be good to go take them down to the switch if we can catch up there we go all right let's take them to the switch 784 Yeah, plastic pillow hoppers always took a lot of sorting. There's always a lot of digging. In some of those places, like, I guess the hoppers had different types of plastic pellets. So you would have to spot certain cars on certain spots, right? It wasn't just as simple as just pulling one and putting it in there. Like, they had to be put in a certain order or a certain way or something like that. So that was always kind of a pain. Uh, same goes for the big G warehouse that I used to work. Um... It wasn't as simple as just pulling 16 empty box cars and spotting 16 loads up, right? Like, 
uh, certain cars had to be on certain doors. That was really uh, time consuming. So door 16 was on the north end and door one was on the south end. And before we left the yard, like the first thing we would have to do is dig all our G GE box cars out and then line them up in order. You know, 16, car number 16 being on the north end of the cut and car number one being on the south end of the cut. And uh, that was kind of a pain. Like that definitely took a lot of work. And you don't see that. Like, I don't think I've ever really seen that in run eight as far as like having specifics as far as where you needed to put certain cars and stuff like that but it was another aspect of it that added to it right All right, let's get these guys shoved back yeah we won't bother we could take all just a large majority of these cars we could take with us there's a few that stay here that uh, go over there like CKS, uh, there's uh, Pet and SLG down there. Those would stay here as well too, but everything else would go north. I would kind of approach this job like switching everything in the yard in the morning first thing and then getting your car sorted and making your trip north after that, right? Like I said, it's very routine oriented. Uh, when I worked the paper mill yard job, I worked it for uh, a few months and uh, it was definitely very routine oriented job. Like uh, every day, the first thing we would do when we would go on duty is uh, we would uh, switch the recycling plant. Like that was the first move of the night was switching the recycling plant. And then after that, uh, we would go hit up the paper dock. Oh, it's the pin fill, doggone it. Never mind. Try it again. There we go. All right, now I think we're set. All right, we're going to put a handbrake on these guys because we're not going to be bothering with them. All right, let's catch up. Take him to the switch. I oh, wish we could lean our head out just a little bit, like just so you could kind of see, right? Kind of hang off just a, a tad. All right, so now we're gonna grab our uh, IPTs. We're gonna pull them out. And then we'll put those on top of our uh, Florida Centrals and it will be good to go. We'll just go with that. All right, we're lined into that track, so we're good with that. I want to do a, a, a video where we're kicking cars, but we just we don't have any need for that right now. There's no need to kick anything. There's not really a lot of sorting like. I guess the night shift did us a solid and kind of grouped all our cars together for us. And this is something you'd absolutely do before you leave out. Like you may want to have your cars in a certain order uh, in your train before you left. So yeah, you'd gather all your cars together and kind of, you know, get them arranged and then going about your business. There we go. Nice. All right. Let's hop down. And it's not going to let me. Yeah, I just, I don't get why that's not working. It used to work a long time ago. It used to work just fine. I think what we're going to do is just maybe drag them for them and forward and cut them right here, maybe. A little bit like as far as room there. Or if we could just drag them without air, honestly. Because I'd, I'd hate to, like, I'd hate to lace the air and go through all that just to cut them right back off, right? If we can drag them without. Doesn't look like it's going to happen, though. Yeah, we're going to have to do it unless they got handbrakes on them. No, they're all released. It's just a lot of cars. 
All right, well, let's go ahead and you know what? I want to check that bottom car first. Okay, that's closed. All right, yeah, we're set on that. All right, let's lace our air hoses. And we'll open it partial here. Actually, this needs to be open all the way. Never mind. That's our partial. All right, so uh, we'll let it sit at partial. You just don't want to open it up all the way because you'll dump the air. It's just like that in real life. Like, you definitely don't want to do that. You kind of crack it open a little bit, let it kind of stabilize, and then you can open it up the rest of the way. You see our, our uh, like I said our flow was fixing to come down. Yeah, all right, now it's going down. Now we can open it up. Sweet. All right, we're good on that. Uh, how many IPTs do we have? Uh, quite a few. Quite a few, all the way to the tanks there. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven IPTs. All right. At least we had the ability to kind of cheat and get some good, you know, situational awareness as far as what we're doing. All right, let's drag them out of here. All right, we'll drag him ahead seven. Watch our speed here, so we don't get too terribly fast because we do have some weight. You gotta gotta figure out like you know what it's going to do. Got about four more cars, four cars. All right, two more cars, two seven eighty four. Oh, actually, there's going to be two more after that. Never mind. Never mind, 784. Two more. <laughs> we need two more cars. That yellow kind of blended together a little bit. All right, now we got two cars. We'll just stop it right in here and cut it off. We'll be good to go. All right, one more car, one. All right, anywhere in here will do. There we go. Now we're set. If we can if we can click it. Come on. There we go. All right, close. Open the coupler. Let's get a handbrake on this one. Man, I can't select anything. Yeah, we we'll have to go up high. There we go. Now we got it. All right, let's get a handbrake. And let's catch up. All right, 784, let's take him to the switch. Two cars. All right, he's left behind. That's uh, that's the SLG, so they would be here. All right, one more car, one. All right, that'll do right here, 784. All right, let's hop down. And it won't let us. Man, it's just being so finicky. At this point, we'll just walk back to the coupling.
All right, seven eight four. Let's come back two and a half two coupling. Nothing quick about switching, right? That's why I was not keen on taking all those like thirty five cars to switch in industries like that. <laughs> There's no way. It'd have been a lot. All right, two more cars, two. Wish it was a little louder, the noise. All right, one, two, a couple, and one. There, right, half car. Ten feet. Yeah, right, that'll do seven eighty four. Nice. Now we used to do uh we used to have to do three step, right? Three step protection, all that stuff. I think they got away they did away with that, right? Like they don't do that anymore. Alright, let's uh lace our air hoses. Let's do partial. Uh what we'll do is we'll drag them out to the main line. Uh, we'll line the switch, we'll do a brake test, and then we'll shove back and we'll catch up on the head end. That's that's totally what I would <laughs> I would do in real life. <laughs> Save some of that walking, right? It's gonna take it a hot minute with all these FEC these I keep saying FECs, Florida Centrals. It's gonna take a hot minute with all these Florida Centrals here. Alright, brake pipes coming up. At least we have the luxury of seeing that too. You would just listen to it. In real life, you'd kind of listen to it. You could hear what it was doing. All right, we should be able to go full. And let's catch up on this tank right here. We'll take him ahead to the switch. It does not want us to catch on the tank. Okay, I guess we'll catch on the box then. All right, 784, let's take him to the switch. There we go. Good with that. Yeah, she's going to be heavy. <laughs> she's going to be heavy with all this. Maybe we needed two units. We may have. <laughs> we may should have taken two units. Would have been nearly as cool, though. Like, if we'd had our power face in the right direction. It's cool running long hood forward, even though it's a pain. I think, uh, how many Florida Centrals did we have? Like 19 or 20? I can't remember. I'd keep better track of this in real life, right? Like you would know. <laughs> like that, roughly about that many. Hopefully we can swing down, it won't be a pain. Nope, it's not gonna let us. Never mind. It's good enough. We'll do it that way. All right, seven eighty four. Keep pulling. Uh, Twenty more. Sounds really nice. I just come out of the power. Like I said, we're doing both jobs, so it's kind of uh, a little bit to keep up with. So, yeah, I'm trying to think of anything else about working local. Like I said, you wouldn't hit every customer every single day. That varied greatly. Some you would hit every day. Some uh, kind of every few days, and then some once in a blue moon. Uh, you wouldn't always pull all the cars and replace them. Uh, sometimes if it's multiple cars, you may dig one out, you know, and uh, replace it. Sometimes you just may go in and pull. Like you might just go in and pull a load and not give them anything in return. Uh, or what else? Uh, you definitely had leeway as far as how you like hit the job and, and worked at that sort of thing. And uh, you did a lot of sorting. Like there's a lot more sorting with cars, stuff like that, depending on the customer.
All right, 784 looks like about three more to switch. All right, two more cars too. One more car, one. That'll do right here, 784. You better not stop. <laughs> As you can say, just when you expect it not to stop is when it just kind of stops butt cold on you. All right, so we know we don't have anything down there to worry about. There's no crossings. There's no switches. There's no, there is a signal, but it's way on down there. We're not going to get into it. So at least I don't think, I don't think we should. So basically we just have them shoved back and uh, pick us up. But what we're going to do first is we're going to get a brake test and how we're going to do that. We're not going to bother hanging an EOT. We're just going to put a flag, flag on the bottom there and We'll say, all right, uh, 784, draw them down. They get like 10 pounds. You see there, we got the luxury of seeing this here. So we know you see the brake pipe coming down and you see the brake cylinder coming on. So you know the brakes are applying. All right, that's good, 784, you release them. There we go, got us a little brake test. All right, 784, you shove them on back, pick me up. Switch is lined. Looking good. It's all kind of coming back to me. It's been a really long time, guys. It's been, it's been, <laughs> it's been like 20 years. Crazy. All right, yeah, switch is lined. Shove them back, 784. I'm starting to feel it, guys. I'm starting to get back in the groove here. Yeah, I, I want to say most locals that I took out, probably about uh, 15, 20 cars at the most, maybe. You know, like... Because I think the thing most people don't realize is how hard it is, like how much it sucks to try to spot cars hanging on to this many, right? Like, it, you know, it kind of gets to be a pain. Now, you wouldn't have your, you know, your cars you're spotting on the very bottom of this cut. Like, that would really suck. But still, though, the more cars you're hanging on to to spot with loads and stuff like that, like, it, it makes it a little bit more challenging. What's our time? 1600s was like we went on duty about what, 1500 or something like that? Maybe, give or take. I didn't even notice the time. In this instance, I wouldn't even count them down or anything. He knows where I'm at. He knows where he's shoving to. The engineer absolutely does. So you wouldn't really need to. At least I wouldn't have. Like he knows. Yeah, this won't be too bad. I said, we'll, uh, we'll do these IPTs and we'll do the Florida Centrals and then we'll just come back. That won't be bad at all. All right, 784 right here is good. All right, we'll catch up and be on our way, guys. And of course, it's not going to let me hop in. It kicks me right back out. There we go. All right, 
right, let's go. So, um, we're going to hit IPT first. Uh, then we'll have to go all the way to downtown Orlando. That's how it's going to go down, and we're going to need to get some lights along the way as well, too. I have to get Pine Castle holdouts. Um, I'm trying to think, where would we go in to do this? Yeah, we'll have to... Um, mm, I don't know. We'll see when we get down there. We'll see when we get a little closer. At some point, we got to run around our train and then shove it back to Florida Central, so... And I need to figure out where is IPT going to be in relation to us. Uh, it's going to be the first one on the left. Okay. First switch to the left. I don't have a milepost on that, so I don't know exactly how far up it's going to be. This is some kind of little private crossing right here. We're not going to get crazy with it. Uh, where is IPT at? Yeah, I don't know how far. This is just not knowing your territory. It's been so long since I've been down here, I couldn't tell you. Do some shift F8 action here so we can see where we're at. Uh, yeah, it's going to be Pine Castle holdout up there. These XA 784 has got to approach Pine Castle holdouts. 6084 north out. So much cooler with the door open now. I love that. All right, here's IPT right here, actually. So basically, we'll try to stop at the switch. do it <laughs> I don't think we are I think we're gonna blow right by it uh, this is like some of the hardest part of engineering to me is like stopping at certain spots right like it, it absolutely is you may do it she may it's gonna be close I thought I timed it out right but I'm kind of doubting myself now I think she's gonna do it yeah, we did. If we're off, it's just going to be a hair. Oh, yeah, just a hair. Doggone it. Yeah. Spurs a jack leg. Completely goof that up. All right, let's shove her back a little bit. Yeah, the engineer would be pissed about that. <laughs> All right, shove him back. Just a hair. Let's go ahead and get this. Step in there, we'll grab that. That right, should be good. Nice. All right, let's catch up. Those aren't going to be unattended, so we're not going to worry about them. All right, 784, take you to the switch. Oh, yeah, I wish we could lean our head out just a hair, like just to be able to see around just a little bit. That would help a lot right here. I've kind of looked back the other way, but by the time you see it, it's too far, right? Perfect. All right, sweet. Let's hop down. Just grab the switch. Yeah, right, catch back up. Now 
All right, so we'll come in here. We'll grab our empties. We'll drag them out. We'll grab the loads. We'll set them back in. Looks like we've got a close clearance up here. Yeah, we do. Yeah, those, man, you have to be careful. I mean, in-game, it doesn't matter, right? With real-life close clearances, man. Ooh. There you go. All right. Let's hop back down and these are all going to have handbrakes. We'll get that. We'll go ahead and lace these. That handbrake. Lace that. Yeah, we done pissed someone off. They done, they done tied down all the cars. You know, got a handbrake on all of them. That one there. Get this. Place you up. And we'll get that one. Place that one up. And then we got to get the bottom here. All right. Should be good. All right. Let's go back to the head end. This kind of reminds me of switching G a little bit. But uh, each car was separated out by like a half car length. So you shove your 16 cars in there, you would cut one off, you'd pull ahead a half, you'd cut one off, you'd pull ahead a half, and you had to be spotted up perfectly on the doors, and the doors were like, there wasn't any wiggle room. There wasn't any wiggle room at all. Let's get that, and let's do partial. Make sure it's open on the other side. That's good there. All right, it's coming back down. We open it the rest of the way. Sweet. All right, let's go over here to the engineer side. All right, set A4, taking to the switch. Man, that air compressor is loud on this thing. Sound like an old pulp wood truck without a muffler on it. swing down and it won't let us I just I don't get that that used to work no problem now I won't do it now I have to do shift F12 maybe something's changed that I don't know about you guys let me know in the comments if you do all right 784 let's keep uh, keep pulling about uh, I don't know what was it seven cars maybe something like that maybe something's changed that I'm not aware of but you could just hit F12 and, and like hop off no problem you hit F11, hop up. All you gotta do is just stand close to it, right? And then F12 to hop right down. It, it worked flawlessly for a long time and now it doesn't seem to be doing that anymore, even though it's been a really long time since I've done this. So, all right, uh, two more cars who switch. One more car, one. There we go, that'll do. Yeah, it's wanting to put us in the ground now. Let's do that. Is it going to let us do it? 
There we go. All right, 784, let's shut back about 3 2 coupling. Yeah, those Railbox cars look really nice. The T Box. All right, about two more, two. One more car, one. All right, half car. Ten feet. That'll do. Nice. All right. Go ahead and lace these up. Just open on this side, right? There we go. Partial. We got a lot of IPTs. What we'll do is we'll just drag them, uh, drag them ahead, cut them off, and then shove them to a spot. We'll take us a minute and charge all these up. Yeah, that looks really nice. I like that. Not sure if was this the mix? Was this another mixed pack? I can't remember. There you go. All right, let's go ahead and open it up the rest of the way. All right, seven eight four. Let's take him ahead. About seven more. We'll cut them. We'll cut them off. Come on, let's go. Let's bail it off. There we go. That's better. We got what? Uh, one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven more cars. Okay, yeah, seven more cars. Do a cut. All right, four more cars, four, 784. All right, two more cars, two. We're losing brake pipe pressure for some reason. What's up with that? One more car, one. I wonder, uh, do we have something open somewhere? I'm kind of wondering. We're losing, uh, we're losing air. All right, right here will do 784. Yeah, we're losing air for some reason. I don't, I don't know why. Who's that? Open the coupler. Let's catch up. All right, 784. Let's take him ahead. Two, two, switch. Now it's coming back up. I guess it's just trying to charge. All right, one more car, one. All right, that'll do right here, 784. Just run, <laughs> just run and catch it. Uh, we need to get on the offside because that close clearance over there, yeah. Close clearance. All right, 784 switch is lined in the clear. Let's shove back about 10. We got more than that, but that's about all we can see, so. Yeah, 
Yeah, it's, it's starting to come back to me a little bit. It's starting to come back a little bit. All right, 784 looking good. Keep shoving 10 more. A little bit more power. It's kind of overwhelming because you got so much stuff to like think of and do and all that stuff. You know, like you're running the train, you're thinking of your cuts, you're keeping track of your cars. All right, 784, keep shoving about seven more to a spot. I wish, I wish we could like click this car and tie a handbrake on it because you could do that. Like if it's kind of close and you're running up to the end of the track, uh, you could put a handbrake on and kind of push against it a little bit, you know, so you could get, you, you could have uh, a better spot, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Seven eight four, keep shoving five more to a spot. Yeah, totally. If I could do it, I would put a handbrake on this one to push against it a little bit since we're going all the way to the end of the track. Two more, two cars. Like, it's really easy to do the car counts and expect someone to do it for you, right? Like, I'm having to do it too, so. All right, about one more car, one car, 784. Yeah, I was thinking the other night when I was thinking about doing switching and stuff like that. The only run-in I ever had with the FRA was actually when I was cubbing. I hadn't been with the railroad very long at all. I was working a local. I was cubbing a local with an old head crew. They probably all had... All right, that'll do right here, 784. Ooh, stop, stop, stop. There we go. <laughs> nice. All right. That's good. Uh, the old head crew probably had, uh, between all of them, at least 60 years of experience, right? Like they were all had been there at least 20 years, if not longer than that, closer to 30. So I was coming with these guys, we're switching in industry and I had to couple on to a car that was up against a, a track bumper. Like one of the only bumpers that I could remember anywhere on any of the territory that I worked. This is like the only bumper. And it was like right up against it. And uh, he's like, okay, you got a couple really easy on this one because there's no wiggle room. Like, there's nowhere you can go with it, right? Is that all the IPTs? Yeah. Okay, so let's get a handbrake on this one. Handbrake on that. Uh, track's pretty level right here, so shouldn't have to worry about it. Close the angle cock on you and open the coupler. And we'll catch up. All right, 784 up and clear. Let's take him ahead to switch. Um, so anyway, had to couple against this car against the bumper, right? And um, the FRA had been sitting there watching. They were sitting in this little black car, like just run of the mill car, right? And uh, the old head had pointed it out to me. He was like, I see the FRA over there watching us because he had radio antennas on top. So, okay, so he, he told me, he's like, when you make this coupling, you got to do it really easy because there's nowhere for the car to go. Like, you just got to bring them in really easy. Well, it was a man and a woman with the FRA. They got out of the car and they walked over there to us because they weren't too far away. And uh, they were literally like, are you going to let him do this? And the conductor was like, why not? He's got to learn somehow, right? And they were like, are you sure? And he's like, absolutely, 110%. He needs to do this. Which really, to me, like, that was none of their business anyway. Nothing had happened. There was no violations. There's nothing was going on. Like, I really felt like they kind of inserted themselves in something they had no business doing. So uh, he let me make the coupling. They went back to the car and watched, and I made the coupling, and all was well. Like, it wasn't a problem. But that was the only run-in I ever had with the FRA that I can remember, you know, I thinking back, I think I talked to another one. There was another one that was sitting in the yard office. Uh, I went to yard office. I was doing a pool job because I was taking a long distance uh, train, right? And um, 
there was a woman sitting at we had like a picnic table in the room or some some kind of table there and uh this woman was sitting there at the table so i got in there and i sat down and she was like how are you doing mr you know spur and did you really say spur said my name and i was like i'm doing great how are you you know and uh, it kind of took me by surprise. I was like, who is this lady? I thought she's from Jacksonville or something like that. She's like, you got all your paperwork in order? And I said, yes, ma'am. Good to go. Treat her like she was a Jacksonville person, you know. Said, yes, ma'am. Good to go. And uh, she's like, okay, we'll have a safe trip. And um, I asked someone else outside. I was like, who is that? And, and they were like, she's with the FRA. But yeah, okay. So that was the second run in. But those are only ones that I can really remember ever having. All right, 784, let's come back about uh, about 3 to a coupling. Switch is lined in the clear. Let's get back so we can see a little better. That's another thing. It's kind of like your peripheral vision and everything is just a little different. Oh, we're in neutral. Never mind. That's why it's not coming back. I was like, why are you not coming back? There we go. Now we're good. Now we're cooking. All right, so our first switch move is uh, complete. Not bad after being away from uh, <laughs> for 20 years. I've done it on the depot years ago. I used to do it back in the day. Let's uh, make about one more big one. 784, one big one. Just slow down a little bit here. All right, half car, half. Then more feet. That'll do 784. All right, nice. Looking good. All right. Let's lay some up. And do partial. Let it charge. It's going to take us a hot minute to do that. In fact, I think what we're going to do is... Uh, Center the reverser and put her in uh, in two. Try to pump this air up a little better. But uh, yeah, FRA run-ins. Yeah, that that was kind of interesting. I don't ever remember them other than that. But it's like he said, how are you going to learn? Like, how are you going to get that real world experience? And we only had six weeks to cub. Like, we had, you know, I had... Uh, uh, a week or two in Jacksonville that we just switched down in West Jacks and then um, then we went to our terminal and then we cut for six weeks and like they're cramming and in like the span of years of railroading in six weeks you know six or eight weeks you know some of these guys were uh, brakemen for years before they ever became a conductor you know so uh, it is way different back then than it is now you just, I really feel like you kind of thrown to the wolves, right? You really just are. All right, I think we're good. Let's go ahead and open it up the rest of the way. And we are going to walk to the head end. I don't think we can shove back. I think there might be some crossings back there, so we're not going to shove back. We're just going to jog up here to the head end, right? And then we'll catch up. And, of course, it's going to do that. There's got to be something I'm missing on that. There's got to be something to it. Alright, looks like air is coming up. Let's be on our way. All right, let's go. All right, so uh, we got our Florida Centrals, so we need to take these up here. I got to figure out where we're going to run around them at. Um, I guess Kaylee Yard. Yeah, we could. We should be able. We should be able to pull them in Kaylee Yard. Let's see how long we are. What's our trade look like? Uh, Seventeen hundred feet. Uh, Fourteen loads. Twelve empties. 2300 tons 1.3 hpt not bad 1700 feet so yeah we should be able to pull this guy in the kaylee yard and just run around it there and then shove to the uh, florida central
We're not even going to worry about speed. Speed isn't going to be a problem for us. Look at this jack leg pulling up on here. What is he doing? Yeah, oh, dude, you better put it in reverse. You're going to have your bumper taken off. All right, we're good. You lucked out, right? You live to see another day. It wouldn't have been bad. We just would have got his bumper. Luckily, during my time on the railroad, the thing that I'm probably most thankful for is that uh, I didn't hit anyone. I didn't get hurt. I didn't hurt anyone else. You know, like I was, I was very thankful for that. That I didn't have to experience that, though I did have quite a few close calls. Quite a few close calls that I remember vividly. Make it into another time, but yeah, very fortunate that I didn't have that happen. All right, so, uh, 784 has approached Pine Castle holdouts, uh, 6084 north out. The thing about running long hood forward like this, you can't see the whistle post. I remember what I did in real life uh, when we ran 70 miles long hood forward with a uh, B30-7 is what we had. I think it's either B30 or 36, one of those two. Uh, I'd have to call out the whistle post to the engineer. So we'd be running long and I'd be like, whistle post, and then he would know to um, the blow like he was very adamant about that <laughs> he's very adamant about you calling those out yeah it's not nearly the great view you would think it would be you know you heard of the southern doing this back in the day the ns some too but definitely the southern the southern love running long foot forward Let's go to F3. Uh, we're not going to use auto on this. Uh, I think what we're going to do is... No, 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 no. Oh, shoot. I got to let that run time now. Don't go on it. Yep. All right. Well, we'll let that run time and then we'll... So we'll put us in at Kaylee so we can run around and shove to the uh, Florida Central. like now there we go now we got it okay now we got us lined in Kaylee all right that should be good yeah no auto for this no AI trains at all I just literally we just did this yeah, I can't tell what we got down there Looks like we got to approach. Yeah, okay, we got to approach down there. Should be South Orlando. places up here we could have worked i'm telling you it would have been a hot minute we <laughs> would have put in a 12-hour shift and then you throw in like having to clear up for other trains and stuff like that yeah you would that yeah that would be a 12-hour day absolutely man
And so, you know, 35 car locals may be quite common on some locals, you know? It's it's hard to say. I just don't ever remember having, like, hanging on to that many cars on a local. Unless it was a feeder train. I remember the night we got the 110. We got everything. Like, the yard had been neglected. They hadn't been doing pickups for weeks, so it just kept piling up and piling up and piling up. But then the guys that were supposed to be doing it during the week, they laid off sick on Saturday and then I caught it on the extra board and they're like, yeah, you've got cars here, 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 and here to pick up. <laughs> you know, you gotta pick up everything. And uh, yeah, so we left out with 110 cars. We had a GP38-2, a GP42, and a Roadmate. And I think when we left out of the yard, we're doing like all of four mile an hour. Like We were really, really heavy. Not a crossing here, yeah it is, never mind. Yeah, I remember us being so heavy. Like, I had to stay at the switch to get our 110 car train out, right? And then I had to line the switch behind us, and then we had a taxi. We had a taxi cab, like a literal taxi cab uh, that would take me to meet the engine, right? But uh, we decided on a point to meet this road crossing that was a few miles down the tracks. And the engineer was like, listen, he said, we're so heavy, I can't stop right there. He's like, if I stop right there, we're never gonna get started. He's like, just swing up on this. It's like one of the first times I ever got on moving equipment. Because back then it was a no-no, right? Like you weren't supposed to do it, even though everyone did. But uh, he's like, you're going to have to catch up. Just, you know, I'll slow down you catch up. So <laughs> that's what we did. We had so many. We got all the cars. They said they wanted us to pick everything up. So dang it, we picked everything up. We got it all. Oh, I can't see. I think we had an approach. CSX 8784 has approached South Orlando. Yeah, we had an approach. 6084 north out. This is going to be cool going to downtown. It has been literally ages since I've been up here. Going into Hornlando. That's what we call it with all the road crossings, right? Hornlando. There, I got south end double track just ahead. We should. I don't know what kind of light we're going to have going in there, to be honest. And I just, I really just can't see. You know what? Let's, uh, we're about to cheat a little bit here. I got to see what's going on. Because I cannot remember this up here to save my life. Like, I really just can't. Uh, restricting. Okay, yeah. South end double track. Got a restricting in. All right. Yeah, we can do that. We can totally do that. You pull your view out just a little bit here to look. CSXA 784 got a restricting south or, uh, what is this? Uh, south end of double track. 6084 north out. Uh, so yeah, this route back in the day, this is another thing, and I've never seen people do this, is uh, this was D251 territory, this double track, which means it was directional running. Uh, in this instance, going in like this, we'd be running against the flow, right? I, I think so. Let's look and see. I think, yeah, we would be going against the flow right here. Um, so in that case, we'd have to get a DTC block. So they would say uh, whatever this block is, and it doesn't say. I'd have to look in the old timetable. They would say, uh, A 784, you got a uh, uh, absolute north and south uh, Orlando block or whatever. Main, what main would this be? Main one, uh, something like that, you know. So yeah, going against traffic, you'd get a DTC block here. I've got a timetable that has that in it somewhere.
We're not going into it just yet. We will be in a minute. This isn't actually the double track here. This is like a side track. I think there's another. Is there not another crossing here? Yeah, right there. All right, switch is line. We're looking good there. All right, so we'll just pull straight ahead. We'll cut off. We'll run around in the yard here, and then we'll grab our cars and go and we'll start shoving. So, yeah, when we come out of here, they would give us permission to come out on the main, and then they would give us that DTC block, and then we would shove up to it. It's not... I don't think it's like that now. I think this changed uh, several years back. I don't know what these other cars are sitting there. None. Probably need to grab them and take them back. We're not going to bother with them. So, yeah, this is Kaylee Yard right here. Yeah, we're, I don't know why there would be wood chip hoppers down here. It's kind of interesting. This would be Kaylee Yard. <coughs> Feathering or independent here a little bit. That should be good. Alright, we'll keep easing up here. We should be in the clear. I, I think uh, I think we're in the clear. Let's see, what is this? 2,200 feet. We got 1,700 and change. Let's peek. Let's peek just to see. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we're plenty in the clear. Let's go ahead and stop. All right, so now what we do is just cut off and run around. All right, close you. Open coupler. You go up here and catch up. All right, seven eight four. Second head to switch. In the clear. We get up here to this crossing we'd probably just flag it we'd probably just stop and flag through it so it wouldn't be blasting my eardrums with that horn all right crossing's clear you gonna let me down nope it's not gonna let me down it just didn't go and do it Yeah, I'll do 784. Go down here, grab this one, and then we'll swing up. Give him a head signal, come ahead. Whoa, not that way, ahead. <laughs> ahead 784. Tell you, it's a lot to keep up with. It really just is. 
Now let's come ahead. We should be good. It's clear track. This would be a tough job is just like a single conductor. You need a brakeman on this job. I do believe, yeah. A lot of work. Not all jobs had a brakeman, though. A large majority of them didn't by the time I was working, unfortunately. We had a few that had brakeman. I used to love the brakeman, job, the brakeman position. That was such a good job. You're like, yeah, I can stand at the switch and throw it all day. Absolutely. No problem. Pretty much what you did, right? <laughs> you stand at the switch. Make some cuts here and there. Sometimes it sucked. Well, I worked brakeman on a paper mill job and you'd, we'd kick cars. Um, yeah, we'd kick cars at certain locations at the paper mill that was, it was a lot of work for the brakeman, but. That line to switch and then kick the, kick the load over onto another track that you're like gathering all your loads up and then send it back down to the conductor to spot up or whatever. Crap, we got those. Oh man, I forgot about all those cars on the head end too. We don't just have our uh uh yeah, we gotta get those on the other end. We sure do. I wasn't even thinking about that. I wasn't even thinking about that. We gotta get them on the other end. We could technically just leave them right here, actually. Yeah, I think that's what we're gonna do. We're just gonna leave those cars here. We'll leave the IPTs. You let me down? Nope. We'll just leave the IPTs and we'll just shove the Florida Centrals. There's no sense in taking those down there. This is where you start getting into a lot of logistics like swapping your train around and All that stuff they could very well use a shoving platform in real life i we had shoving platforms i hardly ever use them they're more of a headache than they were worth honestly just an extra move to make i should be good right there uh close close is he gonna do it there we go Yeah, give him a hand signal to come back. Yeah, I think what we may do is just set those over, the IPTs over. Why did it shoot? Did it just sound like it shot? No, it didn't. Everything's good. That was weird. I don't know what that was about. Uh, yeah, let's lace them up and open that one. Our bottom is going to be open, though, so we got to go down there and take care of that. Close that off. Yeah, I don't want a bottle of the air. Definitely don't want to do that. All right, that looks good. Let's do partial. Uh, let's see how we want to do this. 
Uh, we could pull them ahead and cut the IPTs off and then go around them, or we could set them over in this other track right here and then uh, go with it, or we could uh, we could set them over, grab them, put them on the bottom, and then just take it all with us. I think either way, it's going to be about the same, right? Like, there's not going to be much difference. That's why I got to decide. Do I want to take them with me or I want to live, leave them here? It's seven, it's seven more cars. Seven is a lot. I guess we'll just take them with us. We'll just, we'll switch them around and take them with us and be done with it. All right, that means we're gonna need lights right here, right? Oh, uh, we could go down the lead. Yeah, we got plenty of room to go down the lead here so we wouldn't have to foul the main. Let's do that. Get, call up dispatcher, have him get us a light here. Uh, should be this one right here. No, not that one, Never mind going to be that one then it should be a restricting right yes it is nice all right so we'll do that yeah we'll just uh we'll rearrange our train a little bit right here all right 784 let's take him ahead about 22 a cut All right, yeah, we'll drag them ahead and uh, we'll make the cut. We'll leave the IPTs in this track. We'll set the Florida Central's over. We'll grab the IPTs, go on that, and then... We should be good. We should be good. There's probably a few ways you could go about doing it. This is just the way I think I would do it. Just kind of looking at it right off the bat. Oh, there's a crossing down there somewhere. Just keep easing them along. Look at those are really nice cars right there. Those uh ship X. All right, should be those two tanks down there. Should be it. So, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine more cars. Seven, eight, four, nine cars. All right, five more, five. All right, three more, three. There's some short cars in there. One more car, one. All right, 784, that'll do. Let's get them stopped. Oh, that's not our IP. Yeah, these are IPTs right here. Yeah. All right, let's go ahead and make her cut here. Come on, you know you want to select. All right, let's do close, let's open coupler. All right, 784, taking my head three to a switch.
And that track's already open and it should take those no problem, 1,936 feet. So we should be good on that. All right, one more car, one. All right, 784, anywhere in here, Duke. All right, 784, switch is lined in the clear. Let's shove back 20. Now, of course, if you didn't know your train was going to fit in this track, you would just ride the bottom in, let them shove all the way. And see, right? Like, you just ride down in there and see if it fits. And then pull it back out. We know it's going to fit, though, no problem. Unless his number's wrong. <laughs> Unless the number's wrong, then we would be in trouble. But I think it's going to be fine. Yeah, it's crazy. You know, we're basically working... We're doing two... Uh, two jobs, right? Florida Central and uh, International Paper. And you can see this has actually turned out to be a pretty... involved thing there's another instance wouldn't necessarily have to cut him down he knows he can see where he's from like he knows when he's getting close to the switch we'll grab those IPTs Put them on the bottom, then we should be able to just shove right out the north end and just carry on down the double track to the Florida Central. I I want to say maybe they. I think actually they ran. They would uh, they would run down to Taft, right? Like I think they had trackage rights. That just dawned on me. I think they actually did have trackage rights. I, like I said, I don't know what it is currently, but I think at one point they did have trackage rights and they would just run down there and uh, do the interchange. But you know what? We'll do it this way. It's fine. I really, I don't know much about the Florida Central. I don't know where they ran out of, like, anything about that. All right, start easing them to a stop here. That should be good right there, 784. Oh, come on. There we go. All right, close you off. Hey, right, give me a little slack, 784. All right, let's catch up. All right, take him to the switch, 784. Not this one, but the next one. All right, that's good, 784. All right, give him hand signal, come back. Okay, yeah, that totally makes sense why the uh, Florida Centrals were off on their own down there. I was thinking initially I thought they made that, that swap, but they don't. That's going to be the Florida Central. That's going to be their own deal. Yeah, 
that scooter out there. There, I lace them up. Shouldn't take too long, Chargies. Just a handful of cars, shouldn't be a big deal. Oh, it just shot. Why did it why did it shoot on me? What? <laughs> why did it dump the air? No, it's coming back up. Okay, never mind. I thought it dumped for a second. Alright, yeah, it's coming up. Alright. Let's go ahead and walk up here while he charges up. Oh no, we can't. Never mind. Now we open it. There we go. Now we walk up to the switch. All right, 784, we're taking ahead about, uh, about 15. All right, still got that signal down there fleeted. Yeah, it seems like it did dump, right? Like, what is going on with this thing? That's good. Do, do we have one open on the bottom? Like, we shouldn't. That's close. Why did it dump? Like something is not is not right with this. What is going on? That's open. You're open. Everything's connected. Yeah, our brake pipe. Like that's really weird. Why is it doing this? It should come right up. It's only a handful of cars. Like, it should totally come right up. It's just going down. Let's step in the cab for a second. Yeah, PCS is open. Why did it dump? That makes no sense. All right. Well, if that's the case. Let's, uh, let's center the reverser. Do that. We're in emergency. And do that and let it recharge. I don't know why it dumped. It just did. It shouldn't have. We opened it partial. Like, I, yeah, I have no clue why it dumped. Maybe it's just a fluke. All right, so in that instance, we got to wait here for our uh, PCS to open or that light to go out. There we go. All right, now we're set. Let's release them. Should come right back up. Let's put her in uh, number two. Pump the air up. All right, 784, let's take him to the switch. So yeah, we'll uh, we'll come over to this other track here. We'll couple up and then we'll show up to the Florida Central. Yeah, I had totally, totally forgot that they did that. At least back in the day they did. I'm assuming they still do that now. They do the interchange themselves, but We'll do them a solid, right? We'll do them a solid and do it for them. Get this crossing down here. All right, three more to switch, 784. Let's get on down here in position so we can throw the switch. Two more cars too, 784. Yeah, right, one more car, one. Alright, yeah, that'll do right here, 784. Alright, let's uh we'll see about shoving back. That switch is lined. That switch is lined. Catch up on the bottom here. Get him in reverse. 
All right, 784 switch is lined in to clear. Let's shove back about uh, three or four to a coupling. All right, two more cars too, 784. One more car, one. Let's go ahead and start slowing it down. Let's uh, hop down. We can't ride to a coupling. That'll do right there, 784. All right, let's get these laced up and try not to dump the air. I really don't know why the air dumped that time. I guess that was just a fluke. I really have no clue as to why. Let's see what this one does. Hopefully it's closed on the bottom. I think I did. I've done lost track. I had to take a little break and step away for a while, come back to it. So I'm kind of, I'm behind the curve as far as what we're supposed to be doing. We got a good bit to charge up. We got about 20 cars to charge. Go out here to the bottom. We'll cheat a little bit. Uh, that switch is lined. Yeah, everything's lined and good to go, so we should be set. Those people are going to be mad right there. They're pissed. <laughs> They're like, you parked on top of the crossing. Why? Good way to get cussed out. I'm telling you right now. Okay, there we go. All right, we can do it all the way now. I think maybe last time I opened it a little too quick, right? I could have. That could have very well been it, but we're good now. All right, let's walk down to the bottom here. Let's run. Let's jog. Where's this track go? I never noticed that right there. I don't know. I guess it's just a stub or something there. Interesting. All right. All right, let's hop on the bottom. And we should be good on everything else. All right, 784, let's shove about 10. Build that independent off, there we go. Yeah, this is gonna be a little bit of a shove, guys. This would totally be a shoving, <laughs> shoving move. And it would suck, it would suck to shove that far. Well, a tank car is not bad. Yeah, a tank car is okay. I was thinking we were on a box car. Yeah, a tank car is doable. I, I would totally be okay with that. Either that or covered hopper. Covered hopper made pretty good shoving platform too, but. So we just drop these, grab the others and go back south. We'll be good to go. All right, 784, four more to a switch. All right, 784, switch is line, looking good. Let's keep shoving 20 more. Actually, I think we got a crossing up here, right? Yeah. Maybe? Yeah, it looks like a crossing there. All right, 784, 10 more to a crossing. Slow down a little bit here. Well, the cool thing about doing this, even though this isn't 100% legit, right? Like the Florida Central should totally do that interchange down to Taft is we get to go downtown. So that was the main reason I jumped on that is I just wanted to go downtown. All right, two more, two crossing. Gates are down, looking good. Keep shoving, another 20. Um, at some point we got to cross over to the, uh, to the main. I got to think about that for a second. Where could we cross over to the main? Good question. It's been so long, guys. I can't remember. Yeah, I think we need to stop right here. All right, uh, 784, let's ease into a stop right here. Yeah, we're kind of figuring this out on the fly, right? So we're going to have to come out on main number two. So 
kind of what we would do maybe in real life is uh, you'd call up the dispatcher. You'd ask for permission to come out between um, the south end of double track and I guess north end of double track on the main. Yeah, I think that's uh, what main is this right here? This is going to be main one. Yeah, so we would ask for permission to come out on main one between uh, the south end of double track and the north end of double track he'd give us permission and then back in the day since this was d251 back then which meant directional running he would give us a um a dtc block whatever this block was i'd have to find that timetable but he could give us like an absolute north and south whatever block this is all right, we got both switches are lined. We're good on that. All right, let's catch on up. All right, uh, 784 in the clear switches are lined. Let's shove them back. Ten cars. Looks like it's going to be about, yeah, two crossings. So we'll say ten to a crossing. And this is the tricky part about this job, like doing this as a solo conductor, you know, and just the engineer is that someone's got to get these switches back once you shove through. Uh, I've had some engineers back in the day that would do that for you. Not going to say that's out of the realm of possibility, even though it's an, it was a no-no, but uh it was definitely something that was done so we could say the engineer got it for us i mean if you had a brakeman it's not a problem right like you know one person rides the shove and the other one's on the engine it's not it's a non-issue but uh engineer getting a switch for you is definitely a possibility i had some that were uh that were good about that they would do that for you There's 784. Let's keep shoving uh, 4 2 crossing. Go ahead and count that off while we're at it. So we kind of have an idea when we're clear of that crossover. All right, 784. Two more to the crossing. Gates are down. Crossing's clear. Let's keep shoving. That's pretty cool, the flashing light over there. No right turn. Yeah, crossing. I don't know what's going on with that. All right, 784. Two more to another crossing. All right, 784, gates are down, crossing's clear, just keep shoving, another uh, 10. So if I remember correctly, you can only shove at 25, right? Like that was the maximum speed you could do if it was if the track was good for it, right? We got a long ways to shove. This is gonna be quite the shove and a lot of crossings to protect. Now I see why they don't do that. <laughs> And I totally see why they don't do that. It's easier for the FEC to uh, make that move than CSX. All right, two more to the crossing. Gates are down. Looking good. Keep shoving another 10. Yeah, this is an operationally challenging move, right? Like with all the crossings and the directional running and all that stuff, running against the current... Uh, question is, where is our switch going to be to the Florida Central? It looks like, yeah, about the 790.2. We're at the 790.8. So, uh, we sh yeah, we shove about a mile, looks like. Not too bad. All right, we got the intermediate there. It's uh, South Street, but that's not ours. That's for the other track. You just disregard it. Well, it's directional running because it's only signal for one way, right? I think a lot of people don't realize that if you run against the flow back then, you had to get a DTC block.
All right, 784, five more through the curve. Just in case. Never know what's around that, right? You never know what's going to be around the curve. All right, 784, about six more to the crossing. My car counts are probably way off. It's been so long. Three more two crossing, 784, looking good. And we should be stopping up here for the switch, right? 784 crossing's clear, gates are down. Let's keep shoving another, uh, man, I don't know. About another eight to the next crossing. Yeah, these crossings make it a pain, man. I wasn't thinking about that. We're clear of the crossover back there, but you know what? We're just going to leave it for now. We'll get it on the way back. Try to look for our switch. I think I see it down there about one, two, three, four crossings down, maybe. Seven eighty four, gates are down, crossing's clear, Let's keep shoving another uh, another five. And now we got that crossing. Horlando, guys, it's absolutely Horlando. Got the interstate there. What is that? I four maybe? That's I four. Keep shoving seven eighty four, looking good. Crossing's clear. I think we'll do all these. Yeah, there's our switch up here. All right, set eight four. Let's start easing them down. About eight to a switch. All right, about six more to switch, 784. All right, gates are down, crossing's clear. Let's keep shoving, 784, about three more to switch. It looks like this is going to be a power switch, right? Yeah, it totally looks like it is. All right, that'll do right here, 784. Yeah, it is a power switch. I would think that would be a hand throw, but I could totally be wrong on that. Uh, oh, man, and it shows us in the block, too, but it worked. Interesting. All right. Uh, we got switch line. All right. Switch is lined in the clear. Let's shovel back. 784, about six more cars. Should be too far around the curve here. I've never been over here, honestly. As long as I've played this game, I've never been over here to Florida Central. I think back in the day they had CF7 locomotives, right? That's what they used. I don't know what they have nowadays. I want to say they had CF7s though. All right, it's really something I don't know that much about. Like I know of a little bit, but all right, 784, about three more to the crossing. And the 784 gates are down, crossing's clear. Just keep shoving another, uh, about another six. 
Oh, the gate's down in the... What? Really? Yeah, it totally is. <laughs> it totally is it's in the track. It's fouling the track. Oops. Look that. Uh, 784, let's just stop him right here. Let's just go ahead and stop. It's a little bit closer than what I thought it would be. Maybe we can stop short. Nice. All right, that's going to do good right there. All right, let's get this switch. All right, knock brakes off. All right, 784 switch is lined in clear. Let's shove back uh, about 20. We're going to swing down up here. We're not going to ride it down. Yeah, okay, it totally makes sense because when I loaded this scenario, the cut of cars was sitting there with locomotives on it. I took them off. I totally wasn't thinking. Like, I had complete, a total blank on that. I didn't do that. It's okay, though. Like I said, it's not that big of a deal. All right, let's swing down. All right, 784 looking good. Keep shoving them in the clear. We don't have to worry about anything back there. I remember where our cut's gonna be. Maybe up here. Uh, no, not these boxes. It's gonna be a little further. Yeah, nice Florida sunset, right? I can feel the humidity. I'm surprised that started raining on us. That'd be the part the part about railroading in Florida that would suck doing locals is like it probably it would probably rain on you like ten times in one day, right? <laughs> Literally. It's crazy. The times I've been down there, it rains for ten minutes, it's like a turd floater, and then it's pretty and hot as all get out, and then a turd floater and then pretty. What do we got? I think those cars may be the ones we hang on to. Alright, four more to a cut. 784. Yeah, that's going to be us. All right, two more cars to a cut. 784. One more car, one. All right, anywhere in here should do 784. That's right, right? So KCS is ours, Taft. Okay, yeah, that one is theirs. All right, let's throw a few handbrakes on it. Just in case, we'll put two. It's 20 cars, two. That should be good. I think it's flat right here. Yeah, it's flat. All right. No worries with that. Close you. We need a little slack, All right? 784, give me a little slack, please. That'll do. All right, 784, let's take him ahead to switch. All right, that's good with that. Get up here and catch up. There you go. All right, take him on ahead, 784. About 2 2 switch.
One more car, one, seven eighty four. All right, that'll do 784. All right, let's grab this real fast. Man, I wish I could just get on and off this equipment. This is really kind of aggravating. All right, 784, switch is lined in the clear. Let's uh, shove about three to a coupling. You're coming in a little hot. You can always tell me. Ease them down. You're like, ease them down, 784. <clears throat> One to a couple in 784. Looking good. As long as we're under four mile an hour, I don't care. All right. Half car, half. Ten feet, 784. All right, that'll do 784. All right. Uh, we're going to have to cheat on this one because, yeah, we're going to have to cheat on this. So let's do uh, shift F7. We'll do that. Everything should be good. Release the handbrakes. Go down to the bottom here. All right, let's do a flag and we'll get a brake test. All right, 784, draw them down. Brake cylinder is not coming up. It may not. Yeah, it should be charged because we did shift F7. Yeah, brakes aren't applying. What's up with that? Double check. I may not open that up all the way. I don't think I did, actually. Yeah, it is open. Yeah, because we did the shift F7. So why don't we have... Uh, why aren't the brakes applying? Draw them down a little tighter. There we go. Now they're coming on. We just, I guess they just weren't charged or something. I don't know. I thought shift F7 would take care of that, but. All right. Brakes are on 784. You can release them. And we walk back to the head in, right? guys it should be good to go let's uh let's blast off i don't know how we're going to we may just line the switch behind us and not worry about it we can line it on the dispatcher screen should be a hand throw i'm thinking that's a hand throw in real life but i don't know So I'm guessing, uh, I'm not sure how this would go down, but I'm, I'm guessing since we're running with the current of traffic now, as soon as we clear it up on the Florida Central, we could release that DTC block as in the clear, and then he could give us permission back out on the main, and then it would be signal indication, right? I don't remember how like if we had situations that were kind of similar to this
Like our hit is our headlight working? It seems like it is. Maybe. See how long our train is. It is going to be. Uh, train stats. 18, uh, 1,400 feet, 1,800 tons, 1.6 HPT, 13 loads, 10 empties. Not too terribly bad. Yeah, I'm trying to think of some of the locals that I had back in the day, like how big they were, and I just, I don't... I really think maybe 15, like 20 cars at the most, maybe. Something like that. Yeah, 20 cars might be reasonable. <clears throat> You're talking to someone that literally made 140 round, 140 mile round trip for one plastic pellet hopper. Like that was our, uh, that was our day one day for one of the locals I worked. Uh, we had a plastic pellet hopper that was kind of hot. Like, I think they were close to a plant shutdown or something for that car. So, um, we had to make a 140 mile round trip for that, for that one car. And that was the only switching we did. We took the load down, we spotted it up, we grabbed it. We just went ahead and brought the empty back with us because if we were just light engine, we could only do 30 mile, mile an hour. So we needed another car with us. So uh, we brought the uh, we brought the empty back with us. All right, we got these hand throws down here. We didn't get. We left them. <coughs> In real life, we would have lined those back. We wouldn't have left them open. We just did for uh, ease of operation on here. Well, we're kind of easing down there. There's our switch. I knew it had to be coming up pretty close. Get that window. I didn't realize the window was shut. Is everything shut? No, windows okay. There we go. That's better. Oh, it sounded kind of muffled even with that back door open, right? We got the king of air horns on top of us. This should be way louder than that. Those things were horrible. They sounded cool, but they suck to have them sitting on top of your head. That's enough of that. Yeah, 
Let's go ahead and see about easing it to a stop here. We'll grab these switches, line them back, and then we should be good to go. Should be smooth sailing all the way back to Taft. That's a lot. This was really involved for just two switch moves. Like, <laughs> it's a lot. Or uh, two customers, right? Basically. A lot more moves than that, but two customers. All right, let's hop down. This crossover, of course, you got to get both of them lined for the crossover. You can't just do one. It got to be both. Big no-no. And now we can pull them ahead and we wave them on up. And then we'll just swing up as he goes by. An engineer would probably be talking to the dispatcher right now, getting us a light. I'm trying to think which one would it be? It'd be right here. Yeah, that one. We get that. That one. That one. Um, I'm trying to think how we would do this. Actually, I don't. Uh, Pine Castle. Yeah, we need Pine Castle. So, yeah. There we go. All right, let's swing up. Oh, come on. Why are you doing that to me? See, that's what it does. I don't know why it does that. Get by the station here. I forgot about the depot. Yeah, the station here. All right, CSXA 784 got clear south end of double track. Main one, single main 6084 south out. I don't remember what the speed is through here. I think it's 25, right? I think it is. Yeah, 25. So anyway, now we're at the part where you get to kick back and uh, enjoy the trip home, right? Like we're done. For the most part, we're done. It's gonna be 40 through here, right? This is the 40 right here. Yeah, there's the 40 diamond board. And wipe the throttle. Fudge a little bit on the speed. We're only 1400 feet, it's not a big deal. So, not 100% correct. But uh, kind of like what you would go through, right? Go through the motions a little bit there. Oh, he is way up on the crossing. Look at that. Nice. <laughs> He's going to lose his front end. Yeah, he totally is. CSX 8784 got clear south of Orlando, 6084 south outs. It's always a nice feeling of accomplishment when you get done with local ride, when you've done all your work, you switched everything. It's time to head home.
So yeah, there's way more places we could have hit up. There's a lot of places we could have hit on that. Probably about four or five more. Uh, I think four more on this end. I would have broke off all the other stuff that was down around the yard. I would have just done that separate. That would have been like in the morning thing and then after that make the trip north. And of course, all these switches off the main line like that, they're hand throws on here. In real life, they would be uh, they would be like an electric lock switch. They look a lot like a power switch, but they're not. I'm trying to think how we'll do this. Uh, I think we'll just pull in on the north end of the yard, go in an empty track, cut these off, because these would all go back north of 456, and then uh, just pull the power down to the south end, maybe something like that. All right, CSX 8784 got approached. Pine Castle holdout 6084 south out. Lots of horn action. If you like blowing the horn, the A-line is for you definitely, especially down here. It can get really, really busy between working the throttle and the brakes or like transitioning, you know, from power to dynamics or just whatever. And then blowing the horn at the same time and then like spur running his mouth at the same time. It can get, it can get pretty busy. All right, I am not sure how far is it from Pine Castle. 794 and uh, 797, so about 794.6 to 7.9, so about two miles, give or take. We're gonna go ahead and set up dynamics. No, as I say, don't go. You need to stay right there. You wanted to. That should be IPT right there. Yeah, so we're almost right here at it. think just around the curve baby I'm telling you you don't keep up with your territory it can fade really fast all right there's a scanner so yeah it should be just right around this curve I'm thinking
Yeah, this is that little private crossing. It goes nowhere. Okay, yeah, so it's going to be right over here. Right over the... Yeah, there she be. See if we can time it out perfect here. There we go. Nice. Not bad. Not bad. Sweet. All right. Let's hop down. Let's get this switch. And we may run ahead and get the rest of them, right? Ah, oh, man, I hate how it does that. That just really is just so aggravating. Why do you do that? Like I said, let me know in the comments. If it's something I'm doing, let me know. Uh, that's all our other stuff. We don't really have a good spot to leave it. I guess we leave it on this track right here. Yeah, we'll just leave it on this one. Yeah, let's just do that. Are we lined in all the way? We're good. All green. Yep. All right. We're looking good. All right. Let's take him ahead. Like I said, we'll drop him in that far outside track. We'll let 784 deal with it. I'm sure they're not going to appreciate us leaving our cars all on the north end up here tying it up. <laughs> we got the fuse set there. You know, it, having time, you probably go back in and sort your cars for the next day. You could definitely do that. Kind of get yourself set up. I'm trying to think how we did the paper mill job. There was three different crews that worked that job. We had the, the day shift, the night shift, and then a relief job. The relief job worked uh, the off days for the night shift and the day shift. And I'm trying to think like how we would set each other up. I think day shift would build our outbound cut for us and they would set it over on a track. And night shift, we would uh, we would sort the cars out to like paper dock or yeah paper dock cars, uh, north yard cars, all that stuff. We would you know I don't need to count that off. We're just gonna swing down right here. There we go. Yeah, so we would kind of sort everything out a little bit. So the day job could just come in and grab what, like they know exactly where it's at, what they need. If they need a paper dock car, they know where to get it from. I think, I think that's basically, so we kind of, you know, you kind of help each other out. You definitely didn't want to, to screw one of the other jobs because it would come back to, to like bite you in the butt, right? Like you would, you would pay for that. So if you screwed over the day job, let's say they might not be so inclined to build your outbound cut for you the next time. Like they might may leave it for you, you know, like. Pretty decent train, not bad. We got to go downtown. Next time we won't do the, FE, the F, FC stuff, the FC Florida Central stuff. We'll just let it be. We could have just gone down here and switched a couple of industries and come back. Like I said, we have way more to switch, but I mean, this is already going to be like several hours long and we only did, <laughs> we only did two customers. Basically it was a lot. And we can't kick. We don't really have any sorting to do because everything's kind of blocked out the way it needs to be. So we don't really need to kick. I've done some kicking on here the other night, just playing around with it. It, it is doable, but uh, it, the cars aren't very free rolling. Like they always seem like they stop a little short unless you just like kick the hell out of them. Like <laughs> kick them at 15 mile an hour or something. They might go far enough, but 
Yeah, they seem to stop a little short. But basically what you'll do, and like I said, we'll do a video on it. Will you just go in and bleed all the cars, bleed all the brakes off, make sure they're free rolling. And then, uh, and then you kick them. All right. Uh, 784 anywhere in here will do good. Yeah, that'd be good right here. All right, let's go ahead and get a handbrake. We'll get a couple. Get that one as well. Let's see. How do we want to do this for them? Uh, 654 would be working from this end, building their train. So we'll take this off. We'll remove that. Uh, yeah, I don't want to bust the air yet. Go ahead and close this off. We'll close you. Let's go back to the other end. Now we'll bust the air. We'll dump the air for them. Nice. All right. And then now we'll go back to the other end and close this one off for them. Close that one off. Open coupler. All right. Let's hop on board. Let's pull ahead. And we should be good to go. We'll pull down there by the yard office and call it a day, guys. I know some instances we would leave a cut like that for someone else to build a train or to pick up. And uh, I'm trying to think how we would do it. Of course, you can't close both ends because that would bottle the air. And you no, know, we can't go on this track. Never mind. Never mind. That's not the good one. Never mind. Back up. Uh, can't bottle the air. So I think what we would do is. Uh, I'm trying to think how we would leave a set out for them on a branch line. And they would have to pick up the set out to take to their little local yard, right? Uh, the bottom of the cut would be closed off, so we have to leave it closed, but we couldn't close the end off on our side either. So what we would do, we would leave it cracked. We would leave it open. And uh, that way they could pump up enough air to kind of get the brakes off. And then what they would do is they, the conductor would stand there and they would drag it down to him and then he would close off the bottom and then they could pump the air up the rest of the way. I think that's how, I think that's how that was done. Like I said, it's been 20 years and that probably in itself wasn't uh, completely kosher. It was one of those tricks that uh, you did, right? Doggone it, Spur cannot get it together to save his life. Other way, there we go. All right, now we're good. This should be a clear track for us. Double check. Yeah, okay, it's good. Got power sitting on the other side there. Uh, got the Taft South Switcher stuff down there. What is that, 799 or whatever? Got 785. That's the industrial park, right? I think that may be the one that goes in big industrial park. Those were always fun to do. I did some like that up in Atlanta in the big industrial park up there. Those are always fun because they're kind of like you're off in your own little world. No one bothers you. You just do your thing. There we go. That's better. I thought I already had those on, but I guess not. Some lights going. I could have swore I had those on. No 
not real life. Probably someone else would use this power like the night shift would use it. Very seldom would we ever have power just sitting around not being used. Like power was at a premium back then. We had so many Renorex that we needed and everything. Like you just couldn't, like power just couldn't sit and not do anything like all these units you see sitting around here now. So more than likely this could be like some shared power, you know, someone else would be using it. I remember on one local I worked, uh, the day job was using it and they were using the power and they wound up going dead switching and we had to get in a taxi and go find our power. <laughs> like we had to go round up our power. It was a few miles away in an industrial park. We had to go find it and bring it back before we could do our thing. Let's park them down here on the lead. I mean, I get why you have a lot of power on a multiplayer server because a lot of different people probably won't be on at the same time, so they need it, but... In real life, you knew you were it, right? Like, no one else is going to be using it. All right, now straight ahead would be where uh, 455, 456 would park their power. And you put that right there. All right, let's do that. Dim the headlights. We'll leave it running. And we'll get a handbrake. And there you go. We're good to go, guys. Uh, another uh, another day on the railroad, right? Doing some switching in beautiful, sunny central Florida. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed. Love all of you. Thank you so much for watching. And uh, we'll catch you on the rails next time. Peace.